Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. And we've got a new tutorial today, and it's going to show you how to make an exploding mine. And we'll cover topics like being able to instantiate a prefab or something that's a particle effect, make sounds happen when we walk into the do a trigger event for the actual object that we walk into it. And you can take a look at my fading health system if you want to integrate this with a health system mechanic. But this is just the basic two or a couple of assets that we're going to look at. So just before we start the tutorial, if everybody can give this video a like, it would really, really help me out. So thank you so, so much. So the two assets we're going to look for and use today is this one here called the AT mine, which is free, which is a PBR anti-tank mine that you can download and import into your scene. And also the camera shake FX, which comes with a particle and stuff we're going to base this on today. So when we're in Unity for the first time, I've got an FPS controller, which I'm going to set that to as tag as player because we're going to reference that later. You can go into the AT mine and you can see that the AT mine object has different LODs or it's got an LOD group. So you can just drag the LOD group straight into your scene. I'm just going to scale the item up to two in each of the X, Y and Z axis. And you can see that it's currently pink. Now that's because it doesn't actually have a material on it. So what you can do is you make sure that your AT mine 1K or whatever you want to use is the correct material and you can drag that on all of the instances of your mine. And it's just got an LOD so that when we get further away, it will lose some quality of detail. We can click on that object and make sure that our parent of that object has a box collider on it. And you can see that the box collider is that big. You can make it as big or as small as you want that to be. Now we've got our mine basically set up. We want to go into the camera shake FX, go to the demo, and you can go to the demo scene and you want to find the big explosion which may not already be parented and just drag this into your folder structure into the project down here so we can make it into a prefab because we're going to use this when we need it. So I've just got it here and you can see that it has a trauma inducer script on it. You can add the stress receiver script to your camera if you want to receive a camera shake to your object, but that's not essential. So we've got our prefab here which has the script on. So if I give you an example and I just drag it into my scene, you can see it plays like so. So we've got everything set up. We've got the mine, we've got our explosion ready. We'll just need to write the script to make this work. So what we could do is we can right click, create C sharp, and we're just gonna call this whatever we want it to be. So it could be explosive mine. We'll open up in Visual Studio and we'll just get rid of the starting methods that we have here. I'm gonna have two headers just to keep this all nice and neat. So I've got one for the particles and what I'm gonna do there, and one for the audio effects that I'm going to have too. So I'm going to have square brackets, serialized field, private game object, which is going to be our explosive particle. Set that equal to null by default. Then I'll have another square bracket serialized field and have private vector three, and then call this our explosion offset and set that equal to new vector three, open brackets, zero comma one comma zero with a semicolon. This just means that we'll, we're going to instantiate our prefab, our explosive particle, and we might need to put an offset to whether you want to move it further left, further right, or further up or down. So one is just one unit above. Then we're going to have two different sound effects and I'll show you how to use these. So we're going to have private audio source, and I'm gonna have this as our bomb sound effect audio source. So I'll just call this bomb audio source and set that equal to null. And then I will also have another serialized field in square brackets, private audio source. Again, I'm just going to have this as male grunt audio source and set that equal to null. Now we're going to need a trigger event to make this work. So we're going to have private void on trigger enter. And then when I press tab on that, it'll complete it for us. So we have collider other, we can say that if other dot compare tag, in brackets in quotes is player. Then what we can do in here, we want to expect that if we walk into an, an object and that finds the player, which we already tagged, in this case, you could update your health because you would take damage. And you can look at my fade health system script and you can get all my content scripts and projects on my Patreon along with this one if you want to get access to that. Then what we'll do is we'll make a reference to our particle that we're going to spawn because we might want to destroy it later. This is just an example of something you could do. So we're going to say game object particle as a local variable to this object that we're going to instantiate. Then we'll say instantiate, which means we'll spawn the object and we'll put our variable of explosive particle because that's what we want to instantiate. We'll say that it's the transform 
dot position of this object that we're on now, sort of our mine, and then we can say plus the explosion offset, and it's based on how far you want to put it up, down, left, right, X, Y, and Z. And then we can just say that we have to put in a rotation. So we just want to say quaternion dot identity, which just means it has no rotation because we don't want to affect that rotation. You could specify a rotation with the vector three, but we don't need to in this case. Then we want to play some audio. So we'll say bomb audio source dot play with two brackets and a semicolon to play that audio source. Then we also want to play the male grunt audio source. We'll do the same dot play just like so. Then what we could do is after our, our particle has played, we want to destroy that particle, which is the local reference. And then we can specify what the delay is before we should destroy it. And we can say two seconds. You could set this in the inspector if you wanted a variable. So then you could adjust it on the fly without coming back into script. And then we can just say game object with a lowercase dot set active in brackets is false for this. So it's going to turn our mine off totally. So now we can go back into Unity. I can select on the mine. I can just drag my explosive mine script. You can see that it's looking for an explosive particle. So we want to add the big, big explosion. We can leave the offset as one. So it will be one unit ahead of this. Then we need our audio. So I've got two different sounds, one for an explosion, and one for like a grunting if you've been hurt. So what we can do is I, you can just drag these into your hierarchy and it makes two audio sources on two different game objects. We can click on those and just take play on awake off because we don't want to hear those unless we specify. So what we can do on our mind, we can say that our male grunt, we can add that into our audio source slot and the explosion can also do the same. And we also need to remember that we make sure that our box collider is, is trigger so we can walk into it. Now we can test it out or walk into our object. I just deleted the line which destroys the object so I can replay this over and over. But you can see that when it happens, we walk into it, we get the explosion, we get the camera shake, and we get the sound effects. And you've obviously, like in my other fading health system, you can update a health system if you really want. You can find this project, the script, and every other scripting project that I've done on my Patreon if you want to support the channel. Come and join my Discord if you want to chat. Check out my great assets on the Unity Store, and thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.